On behalf of the City of Fargo, City of Fargo Engineering Department, thank you all for your attendance today. Uh, I'm not quite sure how you wrap up 42 years into just these br brief short minutes. Uh, so today I'm going to let our current mayor, current administrator, former mayor, former administrator, and Mark's longtime assistant give him his report card. <laughs> so without further ado, Mayor Tim Mahoney. Mark, I put on the vest because a lot of times when we were in crisis, you were there and we were doing flood fights. The thing I want to talk about, Mark, is the compassion he had throughout the time, the flood fights, disasters, anything we had. And the beauty was we went around all the neighborhoods, met with all the neighbors all the time, telling, okay, what are we going to do with this neighborhood? How are we going to protect you? What are we going to do? And Mark was my go-to guy with that little neighbor that came and started scratching at your ear and being angry and mad and upset about things. And you could say, let, let me have you talk to Mark and see what you do. And by the time they left, they understood that he cared truly what happened to their home, and he truly cared what would go on. So Mark was our guy, uh, that as engineer, to me, was one of the more compassionate guys I've ever seen. As a doctor, that's really what we try to do is compassion, and he was my doctor of compassion in my room. The other thing I want to tell you about little surprises that go along in a flood fight. So uh, Mark uh, was Denny Wallacher's favorite friend, and he really relied on Mark for a lot of different difficult decisions. And I always remember in the flood of 209, we went into the back, into the mayor's office, Mark I and the Denny were standing there. And he truly, and Zavarro was there as well, and he truly wanted to know that the level was where it was going to be. Because Denny had this kind of mystic thing that he'd tell you how high the water was going to go, and we didn't all understand how he figured that out, because we had a room full of engineers that thought different. But he was kind of mystic that way. But uh, that night he truly asked Mark, Mark, you know, do we think we're protected or we're high enough? And you'd expect me as a surgeon, I think he'd say yes right away, because we've been working real hard for the last nine days protecting the city. But Mark always did his thoughtful thing and thought for a bit and thought for a bit, and then finally said, yep. <laughs> so I went through the flood fight telling everybody, we're OK, we don't have to evacuate. We're OK, we're, we can stay in your homes. We won't have to leave this community. We're OK, you can stay here. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. And uh, we went around to fly on a Blackhawks around all the work that was done. It was really fun to get up in the air and see all the work that's done throughout the city. And we go up and fly all around and we get back down. And I said, Mark, I'm really glad you always believed we didn't have to evacuate. I mean, you stayed in your home and you didn't leave and everything. You know, you really believed that this would work. And he said, Tim, I hate to tell you, I told my family to leave two weeks ago. <laughs> And he explained that a little bit. He didn't want to worry about his wife and kids so he could concentrate on the flood fight. So that's exactly what he did. So I'm going to tell you just an interesting story. Wallacher would just love the story, you know. Um, in the flight of, two, uh, of 97, Clinton came into town. And when Clinton came into town, Grand Forks it was, uh, he put on a red hat and stood between the two people. And the Wallacher's on one side and, and uh, Mark's on the other. And somebody walked up and said, who's the guy in the middle? So Clinton came back here two years ago uh, campaigning for Hillary, and at the time <coughs> I wanted to get another picture signed because there was one signed to Mark, but I needed one for the mayor's office just to have. And it was just, it was just almost eerie because I handed Clinton the picture, and he says, that's Mark, isn't it? And he remembered Mark Bittner from 97, who he was and what he did. So, you know, we just put out a little call, kind of wondered if maybe if something could happen with Clinton because he thought a lot of Mark and Mark thought a lot of him. So we said, you know, Mark is retiring after 43 years and we want to congratulate him and have a big party for him. So Mark, uh, President Clinton wrote you a letter. Dear Mark, congratulations on your retirement from the City of Fargo Engineering Department. During your 43 years with the department, you have served with dedication and commitment. I will always be grateful for your extraordinary efforts during the Red River Flood of, two, of 1997 and not all you've done in the years since to protect your community from future dan danger. All my best wishes for a happy and fulfillment retirement. Signed, Bill Clinton. <laughs> so
So Dan, my report card is A+. Plus. <laughs> no person that worked with Mark a long time. Uh, in 97, you usually didn't see Mark out of the city office down in engineering. Uh, but he was always there. And to give him his second grade for the day, our current administrator, Bruce Grubb. Trust me, I'm not worthy to be grading anything that Mark Bittner did, but uh, I'm really, really flattered and honored to be here today and asked to speak. Uh, I've got a couple of stories that might sound a little goofy to you. They mean a lot to me. I hope they mean a lot to Mark. But um, I actually started with the city of Fargo uh, back in the fall of 1989, uh, right after the Labor Day weekend, as a matter of fact. I had uh, accepted a job uh, as an engineer in the city engineer's office at that time following another rather legendary figure uh, by the name of Dennis Wallacher. So really tough shoes to fill, but um, I, Mark Bittner was the one in the office at that time that drew the short straw and was expected to train me and get me up to speed as quickly as possible. Um, and so on day number one, you know, I wanted to make a good impression. I showed up at work with a uh, long sleeve button down dress shirt, dress slacks, new dress shoes. And the first thing Mark did was threw me in his car and hauled me down to uh, Stonebridge Farms Edition in South Fargo and said, we're going to start you out by being an inspector on an underground job. And it had rained like you can't believe <laughs> the night before. And Mark dropped me off, handed me a copy of the standard specifications book and said, make sure they do what's in here. Out there, I had to walk to these backhoes, uh, and it was literally mud everywhere. So by the end of the day, uh, needless to say, my shoes had gotten a whole lot bigger, and they were never the same. But I was the best dressed guy on the job site. <laughs> so I was embarrassed and proud at the same time, kind of a weird deal. Uh, that's not my most memorable moment with Mark, though. That actually occurred about four years later when I had uh, had gotten my professional engineering license. And uh, I was approached by a local company in town by the name of Concrete Sectional. They, they, were, uh, uh, they manufactured uh, and sold pipe products and they offered me a job because I had this license. And I thought to myself, uh, boy, it's time I get out of the nest and give this a chance. And I remember sitting down with Mark to talk about that with him and he said, I'm just a little concerned, Bruce, that you're making a hasty decision here. And I accepted his advice, but I still did my own thing and uh, you know the moral to this story. As it turned out, Mark was right. So about three months, that's right, about three months later on a Saturday, I swallowed my pride, picked up the phone, called Mark at work because I knew he'd be working. Fortunately, he answered the phone and was good enough to let me come in and talk to him about possibly uh, resuming my employment with the city of Fargo because I knew he hadn't filled my old job yet. Now, here's a perfect uh, opportunity for somebody to say, I told you so, but that's not Mark's character. And I really appreciated that. I was all prepared for it, but he never went there. Fortunately, he was able to hire me back, and that was 25 years ago. So uh, over my nearly 30-year career now with the city of Fargo, uh, Mark has been my primary mentor without question through that entire time period. And what probably impressed me the most about Mark was uh, um, he's one of these people that leads by example more so than words. And I think that has had uh, made a huge impression um, on all of those that he's supervised, uh, his co-workers, and certainly on me personally. And so uh, I really appreciate that. Um, very honored to be here, Mark. Uh, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a bittersweet day for me. I'm happy for you, sad for me. Um, but the one thing you're leaving behind is you set the bar extremely high for the rest of us that are left behind to strive to achieve. And so your example will live on for a long time. And uh, with that, I've been asked to present you with your recognition plaque, uh, recognizing uh, 42 plus years of service. So if you wouldn't mind coming up, Mark, and standing beside me, that'd be great. 
and I truly hope you hang this in a visible place, but this is something that we give as a city in recognition for years of service for the city of Fargo. And it reads, Mark Bittner, Director of Engineering, in appreciation for over 42 years of dedicated service to the City of Fargo Engineering Division, dated June 1st, 2018. Mark, congratulations on a job well done. Thank you. Mark has served under many administrations, mayors, commissioners. Now I'd like to have Mayor, former Mayor Bruce Furness come up. Thank you. Well, thanks everyone. Appreciate your being here. Uh, I, I was asked to speak by Brenda, who said it would only take about five minutes and it would only be the engineering department. So, <laughs> got got that part wrong, so. <laughs> I first met uh, Mark when I got on the commission in uh, 1992, and I happened to have the portfolio of, of engineering. I'm not, not sure how I got that. It must have been something I did wrong, but I never. <laughs> Anyhow, I went over to, to, to see Mark and how the engineering department was uh, working, and uh, we had a long talk, and he showed me lots of things. And one of the things he had is, was a master plan for the entire uh, engineering department as to all the projects that they needed to do and, and all the ones that they have completed. He was also very much a man who, who wanted technology. And whenever we had some money to buy terminals or computers for our city employees, we always had to go to Mark first because he wanted that technology. And it paid off in the long term. So I appreciate that as well had a thing called a pavement management system, which I thought was pretty slick. Uh, they kept track of every piece of concrete on streets in the city, had it uh, reviewed periodically to see how, this, how it was standing up, and then they would either replace or repair uh, that particular thing. You've already heard a little bit about the flood of 1997, but I'm here to tell you that uh, we would never have gotten through that flood without Mark uh, being involved in that. He would drive around the town and he would see, he would look, and as has already been pointed out, he would tell how, how high that water was going to go. And uh, another initiative that was started back then was we thought the, the flood would be along the Red River. And so we had set aside uh, five different neighborhoods uh, where we would go out and tell those people what we think is going to happen, how, how they needed to get organized. He took the initiative to assign a, an engineer to each one of those five areas, and that person was working full-time in those areas and as a liaison back to, to the city. So he did a great job there as well, and one of the things I noticed at that time was even though he was in the midst of this uh, terrible situation, he was always very calm. I can remember one night when Mr. Zavarall and Mr. Wallacher and Mr. Bittner and me and I were sitting down in, I think it was his office, in the basement of, of this building, uh, that building over there. And it was about 3 o'clock, 3 a.m. in the morning. We were trying to figure out what to do next. And I, I, one of the words I've used is, is he's calm, and he uh, doesn't ever get upset. He doesn't get riled. But at that time, at 3 o'clock in the morning, he said, well, you guys weren't doing what I told you to do. And so we were having problems. So he, uh, he, he that's the only time in... Uh, how many years? 12, 14 years that I ever heard Mark make a comment like that to someone. Uh, he has excellent relationships. I'm going to read off just some words. Uh, he had great uh, rapport with the federal government and the, and the Department of Transportation, also with the North Dakota DOT, and I know some of those people are here today uh, or have, they have worked there. And, but more importantly, I think it, he had great rapport with the contractors in town. And that might be when he, sometimes when he was given an argument with one of the contractors, but, but they did uh, believe what, what he was saying. And so what I wanted to do is close with some words. Uh, Mark, I'm just gonna rattle them off, and some of them have already been said, but these are the things I think about Mark. 
He's a quality individual. He's also a consummate professional. He, he does his job very, very well. He's articulate. He's even tempered. He's talented. He's effective. He shows commitment and character. He has judgment and is well liked, as you can tell by this room here. And he's a leader and a friend. And so, Mark, you've been my friend for a long time. I do have a little thing to give you here. It's a, it's a little dollar bill. Every time we had problems in the city trying to get some more funds, we, we, we never had enough money. So we went out and we, we got a, a million dollar bill. A million dollars. And so, Mark, this is going to be my gift to you, as um, you can spend it any way you can find a way to get it. <laughs> so, congratulations. Our next individual, better known to most of us as PZ, worked with Mark a long time. A lot of fights out in floods with Pat and Mark. You always knew you had your back covered. They wanted the best for the city and they wanted it done right. Pat, please. Thanks, Dan. Mark, Marilyn, Mike, members of the family, Mayor Mahoney and Mary Furness, um, elected officials former, I see Gibbs here, and. Brad uh, Wimmer I saw earlier. Uh, um, Fargo staff and friends. You know, from the looks of it, it looks like we've got a flood meeting going here. <laughs> anybody from FEMA or the Red Cross? Um, anybody see Danny's red jacket? I guess we're talking about uh, trying to get a hold of that for the new city hall. Uh, it's an honor to be here today. and. Uh, I'd like to reflect on some of Mark's impact on the city over the years and how he's created a legacy. I see some of these words floating around here. And um, he's an engineer that will re be revered by future engineers for many years to come. There's an African proverb that I think has been used, uh, overused recently, and that's, it takes a village to raise a child. Um, there should be a corollary to it, and it, it, it should read something like this. It takes a great leader to guide a village where people prosper and children are free and are full of energy. That full of energy stuff when you got grandkids maybe is a little overbearing. Um, Mark is one of those leaders that has guided this city to grow and prosper. His leadership is in the bones of Fargo. Things you see or things you don't see and take for granted. Streets, sidewalks, bicycle lanes, water sewer lines, flood walls, and yes, drainage ditches and ponds. Without some knowledgeable, someone knowledgeable about the public infrastructure and passionate about making it better, the city's ability to prosper and to preserve what our ancestors gave us, we would be just another city with no character and would not be recognized as a leader in the state or the region. In 1991, I was charged by Mayor Lingren and the Fargo City Commission to recommend a person to be the city engineer. There were a number of qualified candidates but Mark's interview, in his interview, he made a comment at the conclusion of the interview that has stuck with me to this day. He said, I may not be the most qualified candidate as far as having management experience, but I will be the hardest working city engineer and the most loyal employee for the citizens of Fargo. That sealed the deal for me and I made the recommendation. Reflecting on that statement surely points to just a couple of Mark's enduring human traits that has displayed throughout his public career. Bruce has mentioned them, Tim has mentioned them. I want to dwell on a few. Um, Hardworking and intelligence. We've, we've kind of alluded to some of this, but if we had to, as, as managers, we weren't supposed to keep time, uh, uh, time uh, uh, sheets, but Mark would always work on projects. He had to bill them out, so he did, uh, he did keep time sheets. And, if you were to take a look at his timesheets on a weekly basis, and it was less than 60 hours, you thought he was either ill or he was on vacation. Never slacking, but he was one, uh, either ill or on vacation. Uh, he didn't only manage the engineering department. He reviewed work, 
He suggested design changes. He spent hours analyzing policies that impacted how the city should develop and how it should be paid for. I, I wanted to allude to one specialist, uh, one example, and that was the storm sewer system. You know, we always talk about 1997, we talk about 2009, but in 2000 we had a rain event that uh, we flooded more homes in 2000 than all of the uh, floods in the last hundred years. And uh, what we had was a mishmash of storm sewer collection systems. And so Mark spent hour after hour coming up with a storm system that would collect the water, would create ponds, and now you see these ponds all over, all over town. And uh, you know, the, the thing is, is that we've asked Mark several times, well, why don't you just make bigger pipes? And he would say, if we put bigger pipes in the ground, the cost would be so expensive, people couldn't even live here. So he came up with a system. It wasn't just a project, it was a system that I think we'll all benefit for years and years. And of course, then uh, as we talk about spring floods, as we get later in the year, in April and, and uh, late April, the opportunity to have a, a large rain like we might have in the summertime is a pro possibility. So we can not only get flooded from the river, from uh, overland flooding, but we could get flooded from the interior, which would cause us all kinds of trouble. So again, Mark's plan to, to allow us to have a, a storm system is, I think, uh, one of his legacies that will help us forever. Um, Staying true to established engineer principles, I think uh, Bruce alluded to this too, within the public political arena is a challenge unto itself. I'm not an engineer, but I don't know how many times I've heard that in, in comments and they're always questioning the engineering techniques. Managing to secure the trust and ability to lead elected officials without offending is a real art. And Mark's genius enabled him to do that very well. To have people think the ideas you gave them are theirs is the Rubik Cube of public policy, <laughs> and you solved it. <laughs> Courage, how many times have you seen Mark stand before a crowd of concerned citizens and discuss in great details the reasons for undertaking a project that might impact properties to, uh, to the objections of a few angry souls? Or how the city is, was going to protect properties from the floodwaters of the many floods that we've had and, you know, you don't see it, but one of the, 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 the best and the worst times of man is after the cleanup uh, after a flood. Those are even more severe than, than anything prior to a flood. You know, damaging lawns, taking out trees in the backyard, all of that was a concern. And Mark's, like Bruce said, Mark was calm and he took care of all of those sort of details that uh, people wanted to know. Loyalty, discipline, and stubbornness. Uh, there's a good stubbornness, and Mark had it. He talks about uh, engineering as how it should be done, and he does it in a gentle way, and uh, eventually he gets his way most of the time. <laughs> Discipline, I don't think that he could have survived as long as he has, even with his illness, if he didn't have the sort of discipline that he has. He eats the right way, he exercises. Uh, I'm still amazed at uh, your physical ability, Mark, as, as the, the, the illness has progressed. And loyalty, I think we talked a little bit, but, uh, you know, loyalty is to the community and to his staff. And sometimes loyalty and stubbornness kind of come uh, together. I can remember one time we had a staff member that was just seasonal. I mean, he was just going to be here for a little while. And uh, one weekend, uh, this guy got in trouble. And so on Monday, we had to go in the Mark and tell Mark, uh, we have to discharge this person. And he said, well, he's such a good worker. We really don't want to. Isn't there a way we can get around it? Well, Mark, it was a felony. <laughs> <laughs> and he was selling drugs for the Mexican cartel. I mean, we had to. <laughs> he said, well, OK. But I mean, forg <laughs> forgiveness is probably another trait that he had. Um, we had, I have a sense of humor. Yeah, I have a sense of humor, and, and uh, I'd like to correct you, Mayor, Mayor uh, Mahoney, on that picture. Uh, what Mark really said was, who are those two guys with Wallacher? <laughs> he also, uh, I mean, he has a great sense of humor, and uh, he, he came up with a definition for summer street construction in Fargo, gridlock. Um, 
and I think that uh, Jeremy Gordon has, has followed through with that just as well as we tried to get here. Um, and of course, uh, Mayor Furness would always tease him about that, about how he couldn't get to work, and he would say, you got gridlock, and Mark said, well, haven't quite accomplished it yet. <laughs> In closing, I want to thank Mark for uh, giving his time and wisdom and wit and wish he and Marilyn uh, the best in the next journey in their lives. Um, it will be different, Mark. You'll have 26 Monday nights that you won't have to worry about where you're going to be. <laughs> uh, and moving forward, I want to give you another mantra of Mark's, uh, one of his passions, and that's go twins. Thank you. <laughs> Our next speaker, what can I say? If you want to see somebody that emulates Mark, uh, always there, always a person to lean on in our engineering department, now retired, Dave Johnson, please. Well, I, uh, kind of like Bruce Furness here, I, uh, Brenda told me maybe I would say a couple of words at the engineering department thing later on. <laughs> so I wasn't quite repaired either, but uh, I guess most of mine, I just wanted to reflect a little bit. Uh, back in 1975, I was on a survey crew with a couple of guys, uh, Ray Giesinger and Tom Hubner, and we hired this guy, and I said, who is it? Oh, it's just some guy from the highway department. Yeah, his name was Mark Bittner or something. So, okay. And the year before that, we'd hired another guy from the highway department. His name was Dennis Wallacher. Well, those two guys from the highway department turned out to be pretty decent guys. Um, you know, they ended up running the city and stuff. But, uh, Mark, I don't know if you remember back, uh, we got our first computer, I think. Remember when Jerry Anderson came out there and got it to make a beep? <laughs> he was pretty proud. He was pretty proud. Jerry Anderson was our city, assistant city engineer at the time. I think we had the first computer in City Hall. And we progressed from there. We went, uh, we took up programming. We, we learned uh, AutoCAD drawing, which we started with a program called Sketch. Um, well, that was our initiation into automatic drawing with computers. We progressed to uh, AutoCAD, AutoCAD 3D, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Mark, we started with uh, Lotus Excel spreadsheets, and most of you guys, I don't know if you know it, Mark is the king of Excel spreadsheets. He did the entire city budget on an Excel spreadsheet. Um, that was the one that Bruce was referring to, or that he came up with the city plan, and Mark uh, would have pages after pages all linked together on Excel. And, uh, before that, Mark and I used to do design for subdivisions, and we would do them longhand with calculators and coordinate systems, and, and uh, we would do many subdivisions together. Um, Mark uh, did the design for the drain improvements through town. He did a lot of the sanitary lift stations, the pump stations. Um, I saw the picture up here earlier. There's, this, there's a picture of a, a lift station with some wood planking around it. We used to call it Fort Fargo. I, I believe you did that. We had a summer flood in 75 when I was on the survey crew the first year you started. And I can't remember if we had another one in 78, but I saw the date on it was 1978. So I'm thinking it came after that summer flood when we were out there sandbagging. I see Joe Manning's back there. He was in on the relay crew. We were throwing sandbags trying to save the lift station. Used to sit on the corner of First Avenue and Second Street. And it eventually got moved, but that, that station is there. Mark designed, I would think it was probably your first flood design for the city of Fargo was Fort Fargo. And that was to protect that lift station, which took care of the whole downtown. Um, but I guess what I, what I really want to get to is, is uh, uh, Mark was an engineer's engineer. Uh, professional in his demeanor um, and the way he treated associates. Uh, whether you work for him directly or indirectly, whether you were a contractor, whether you were a city employee, a, a consulting engineer, a developer, a salesman, didn't matter. He treated everybody the same. He was very professional. He seldom lost his temper. Uh, he always saw the best in everybody. 
Uh, Mark's a family man. <clears throat> and everybody that worked for him became part of his family. I think, uh, excuse me, I think Mark knows the name of every employee that ever worked for the city engineering department, probably their wives, probably their kids. Um, and he probably knows the ages of the kids too. Uh, <laughs> but many a night or day we'd be sitting there and, and you'd look in Mark's office and, and Mark's either in there working or he's got one of the employees in there and they'd start off talking work. He'd somebody give him have a question. Pretty soon, Mark says, uh, how's the wife? How's the kids? You know? And I think that's, uh, excuse me. That's what made Mark such a great person to work for. He had uh, something about him. He cared. He cared about his employees. He cared about the city. And he cared about his coworkers. Uh, so anyway, I guess that's it. Uh, he was a great boss, a mentor, a friend. I uh, wish you the best in your retirement, Mark. Uh, congratulations. Well, Mark, I'm trying to stay focused. 23 years ago, a man hired me and you part, become part of the city of Fargo. From there you become part of a team. From there you become part of his family, as Dave said. Mark knew everybody. He knew everything about you. I, I cannot say enough about you, Mark. I, I love you dearly. Without further ado, Mike and Mark, please. Well, this is really unfair. Dad asked me to come up here and speak for him. He, he said it was because, you know, it's Parkinson's, he wouldn't be able to speak very well, but I know very well that that was because he'd be a, a bumbling mess crying the whole time. And so, <laughs> and then all of a sudden Dave goes, and I'm like, oh no, we're gonna have to, we gotta find the third string to get up here and start talking. So I can't even look at you. We won't look at each other. We gotta hold it together just for five more minutes. We can do this. So I, it's amazing to see the size of how many people are showing up and the size of this party. I, you know, jokingly, I, I think it's probably the second biggest party for your retirement. I'm guessing the neighborhoods around 17th Avenue underpass are probably celebrating quite a bit more to hear that you're no longer gonna be working. So that's great. But in all seriousness, he asked me to come up and, and say thank you. Um, specifically to, to three different groups. And the first was his engineering team. Um, it's so fun to listen to him talk. We've had a, long, a lot of long car rides where he just told me how proud he was of everyone that he worked with. And, and just, you know, it was, you know, people said it multiple times, it's like a family. And it, it is, and you hear him talk about how proud he is that, that this person did that. And it's like listening to a father talk about their kids. And it was, and it was amazing. And it's just so fun to hear how excited he is to see where, where the team's gonna take it moving forward. The second was his family. You can't work 80 hours a week without a great support system. And so he, he really pays a lot of tribute to everyone that helped him uh, be able to accomplish all the great things that he has done in his career. And the last was, you know, the people that worked alongside him, you know, whether that be city leadership, whether that be contractors, consultants, or you know, either different agencies, you know, he was always so proud to have worked with all of you. Um, he just always talked in such high regard about how smart this person was and how great this person was at their job. And that's, that's what I've always tried to emulate from my father is humility, is everything he's ever accomplished, the first thing he would do was he'd say, well, and actually it was this person, that person, and this person, that they're responsible for uh, actually what happened in this. And so I'm not doing this justice. If he, if he was up or he would go chair by chair, name every person and say something great about why you all made him very successful. And so... But, you know, I, I said earlier, Bruce, that, you know, you lead by example, and it's just he's such, a, such an amazing hard worker. And there's a lot of folklore along, about how much people work during the flood, and so I can attest having, you know, live with Dad. Um, he, I think the one week in 1997, he slept for four hours, and, and I'm not kidding. You know, people say, I oh, worked a lot, but four hours, <laughs> not a lot of sleep. And I, I just remember very vividly one night he came home, and he was trying to get two hours of sleep, 
and the only thing he could do is he, he weighed, laid awake, wide open, thinking about what else he could do for the city. And, and that's what he always tried to do is what more can I do for the city? And, and I think that that's, you know, it's hard. It's a really tough day for you to retire. He always told me he was going to die at his desk. And I thought he was kidding. And then he told me it five more times. And I'm pretty sure that that was actually his goal was to die at his desk. Um, but you retired, you know, after, you know, with Parkinson's. And I think it's tough because I know he still wants to be working currently. Um, but there's, it's every once in a while, he tells me he's embarrassed. And I said, that's absolutely foolish because no one could have accomplished what you accomplished with 20 years of Parkinson, hands down. So. But retirement's going to be amazing. You've got a lot of good things going on. You know, we mentioned the Twins. He's going to catch a lot more Twins games. He'll be able to get on his bike quite a bit more, tinker around in the garage, spend more time with the grandkids. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, he actually just bought a giant camper. And if you've ever seen him drive, watch out. If you ever see a camper on the road, it's a little scary to think about that. But he's going to absolutely love it. Um, but I want to close with one personal story. I, uh, as some of you know, I followed in my father's footsteps. I'm also a civil engineer, and I didn't realize the size of the shadow that he cast until I, I joined the industry. And the first year, I think it was 50-50 whether I was Mike or I was Mark. And then even to this day, I accidentally get called Mark all the time. And everyone's so apologetic and so embarrassed. And I go, absolutely not. I go, if, even if it's an accident, to be mistaken for my father is the greatest honor you could ever have. So I wanted to thank you. <laughs> well, thanks, Mike. Thanks to all of you for and it's nice things about me. Uh, I want to recognize my mom. I'm three years old. This is Eva. She is what makes me what I am today. And thank you, Mom. Well, I just say thank you to, to all the staff that worked on this day. I cannot believe how many people are here and I have so much respect for. You are what made me who I am. Made me want to look out for what's best for you as citizens of Fargo. And I'd like to thank, particularly, Christy, Nan, Brenda, Bruce, Bruce, Pat, Mayor Tim. Oh, what a fantastic day for me. And uh, public service. It's so rewarding, even if the Christmas, Christmas bonuses aren't that great. <laughs> well, thank you all. Thank you all for coming on Mark's behalf. There are refreshments, please enjoy them with Mark and his family. I'd like to thank Mark and especially your family for sharing with us for all these years. 
so much. Greatly appreciated. We love you dearly, Mark. Thank you. If anybody would like to say a word for Mark, we have a row, some mics uh, so we can get them on tape so Mike, Mark can have them. Just raise your hand and we'll get a, a mic to you if you'd like to say a few words for Mar to Mark. I'm Mark's brother, Brad, and I, I farm our land at home. Anyway, I remember growing up, uh, our uncle Emmett, he called Mark Spud, and I called Mark Speed Limit because I thought he runs so fast, but as we got into sports, I knew that was the wrong nickname. <laughs> anyway, congratulations, Mark, and a wonderful career. It's a pleasure to be here today uh, to congratulate Mark and wish him the best. I, I was on the city commission when Mark was hired, and I went as his work through the engineer department. I was his com commissioner in charge of the engineers at that time, and everything was great when we go and check with Mark. I recall the time we were interviewing Mark for the position that Wilbur Michelson had, it was called Director of Public Works. And we were discussing things and how he felt about moving up in the engineering department. And he said, and I think I can quote him on that, he said that he loved being a city engineer and he's happy as a hog in a slob shock. <laughs> so that told us he was very happy and where he was and, and even if we didn't appoint him lecture, but he was far above the other candidates, so he became director of public works and did a super job for the city. Congratulations and best wishes, Mark. My name is Gay Webster, and I am Mark's eldest sister. And we've had a wonderful relationship, but he loved his engineering department. So for everything that you have done for Mark, thank you very much. And thank you, and Mark, good luck in, after 42 plus years of engineering. And my name is Kevin Bittner, and I'm the other brother. And uh, I also am a civil engineer. And I remember, um, this is my Mark's quiet influence on my own life. I remember being a senior in high school, and uh, Mark and I were talking about you know what I was going to do and where I was going to go to school. And and I said, I I think I want to be an architect. And uh, that was probably a curse word to Mark. <laughs> and so in his quiet, gentle manner, we just kind of talked about, um, you know, different careers. And, uh, but we were also both, and, and, and I know we're in the middle of bison country, but, uh, you know, um, and Mark's a bison fan, but obviously he went to the University of North Dakota, so he's also a Sioux. And so I think he was influencing me on uh, going to the University of North Dakota as well. Uh, and so uh, in his gentle manner, he, we talked about civil engineering, and, and that's where I wound up going to the University of North Dakota. So thanks, Mark, for your influence. Thanks for always being a mentor to me in my own career. And uh, good luck to you and Marilyn and, and everything that you do. God bless you.
We'll let you talk to him privately. We know a lot of the engineers probably want to say some things to him as well. But thank you, everybody, for coming today. It's been a great day, and we knew a lot of people would come, Mark. We opened the commission room for you. So this is how much people love you. So thank you, everybody. Thank you.